Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Perfect square trinomials. Okay, what, do, what does that mean? What does that mean? How do you factor a perfect square trinomial? Well, here is the idea. If the first term of a trinomial has a perfect square, in other words, 1a squared, you can separate that into an a times an a, and the third term is a perfect square, and the middle term has a certain pattern with the coefficients and the product that you have there. Okay, I'm going to show you some examples, but basically it's factored like this. A and A, B and B, and then what we do is we match the middle term sign. All right, so if this is a positive middle term, then both of these are going to be positive. All right. Notice how the middle term here is negative, so it's going to be a minus b times a minus b. Okay. In these perfect square trinomials, when we factor them, both binomials are the same, so we actually can write it even simpler. And check with your teacher or textbook, but probably this is considered the best final answer right here. Okay. Use the exponent. So it's a binomial squared. That's how we factor it. All right, now it's not always this simple, so let's take a look at certain um, coefficients that might be involved. Sometimes you're going to have a coefficient of the first and the third term that still make them perfect squares, but then it sort of affects how we factor it. All right, what I want you to do is think about this middle term as, the, as double the product. Double the product. All right, what does that mean? All right, well, first of all, 4a squared, we know that that's going to be 2a and 2a. Okay, no problem there. 16b squared, since we have to take the square root of that, that'll be a 4b and a 4b. All right, and again, we take the sine of the middle term. So it's going to be a plus in both binomials. So what I do is I look at these two roots here, a 2a and a 4b. If I multiply those together, that's going to be 8ab, right? But I double that, okay? That's what that 2 means. So this would be, if I double 8ab, that would be 16ab. All right, so now if I had 4a squared plus 16ab plus 16b squared, then I could factor it like that. And that would be, the final answer would be 2a plus 4b. That whole thing is squared. All right, now let's go ahead and try some other examples. What if this is a 9, so that's a perfect square right there. And what if this is um, 81? All right, so we're going to keep the uh, ab there, but this double the product part is the key. Now notice the middle term is negative, so both of these binomials is going to have a negative sign. And 81b squared is a perfect square. I can factor that into 9b times a 9b. So that would go there. And 9a squared would be 3a times 3a. And again, the shortcut is to double the product. Well, what's the product of a 3a and a 9b? 27ab, but don't forget to double it. So doubling 27 would be 54, and then the a and the b. All right, so if I have a first term like this, a third term like this, both perfect squares, and if I have the middle term that fits that pattern. Then I can factor it into what I see here. It does become a perfect square trinomial. 
All right, it's all about recognizing the pattern. And once you know it fits that perfect square trinomial pattern, then it's very easy to factor. It becomes a binomial squared. One more example. Here's the rule. Always find the GCF first, greatest common factor, because the way it appears now, it may not fit the perfect square trinomial pattern. But after I factor out a common factor, maybe it will. Let's try that. So I'm still going to have a trinomial here inside those parentheses, but let's see. I can take out a factor of 4. All right, so that would leave me with x to the 4th minus 6x squared plus 9. All right, does that trinomial in the parentheses fit the pattern of a perfect square trinomial? Well, let's look at it. Yep, x to the fourth is x squared times x squared. So I can put those there. The 9 is a perfect square. That'd be 3 times 3. And we know that it has to be the same sign. And we're going to test it and say that it has to be the same sign as the middle term. So we're going to put a minus in both places. And let's see, half of the product, or we double the product. So x squared times 3 is 3x squared. We double it, and yes, that does give me the proper coefficient of the middle term. All right, to finish this off, it would be 4 times x squared minus 3 quantity squared. All right, not too bad. Look for the GCF first. Okay, in this case, I have a 2 factor I can factor out, so let's do that. Dividing 2 into each part would be x to the 4th plus 12 x squared y squared plus 36 y to the fourth. All right, check for the perfect square trinomial pattern. Don't forget the two on the outside. And let's see, the square root of x to the fourth would be x squared. That will go in both places. The square root of 36y to the fourth is 6y squared. The middle term is positive, so let's put that sign in both places. And if I take these two products, x squared times 6y squared, multiply them together, that would be 6x squared y squared, double it, 12. Perfect. Okay, let's just simplify our answer. So it's 2 times that binomial squared. All right, very good. And thank you so much for watching this video. This is factoring out complex expressions. It's the perfect square trinomial. Thanks for watching. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard and take care.